We're going to talk about three body problem, okay, or Santi. Um, I finished watching the Netflix series, mm -hmm. and I also subjected myself to watching the Chinese version because there is a Chinese version that um, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that they rushed it out to make sure it was released before the Netflix. Well, this one. is what we read on the Chinese. Yeah, I could be wrong, but yeah. it looks like it was rushed out. Sure. Um, I, I only watched the first three episodes of it, and I couldn't stomach anymore. It's actually very b boring in comparison. It was sterile. Mm. It was boring. It was literal. It was yeah. literal, yeah. but in a bad way. But the important thing is that they completely ignored and cut out the cultural revolution scenes. And that's that's actually where we're going to get into some people that were supposed to criticize it, to say, no, they, they misrepresented China. They misrepresented our government, our culture and stuff. That was what was pushed to the top. Yeah. It's not that Chinese people were, were actually upset with it. It's no. that the people that are the influencers. coerced mm -hmm. by the government to say these things, they won. You know who misrepresented the Chinese government is the Chinese version. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't yeah. show anything about the Cultural Revolution. Mm. I watched the first three episodes. It wasn't even mm. mentioned. The only thing yeah. that you saw in the first three episodes was, you know, in the very first episode, it showed you like the whole contacting the thing with the radio edition stuff during that era. They even got the era wrong. They put it as like 1979 or whatever, which is... Yeah, the Cultural Revolution you know, finished in 76. Yeah. So, so in, the, the worst part yeah. is, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the worst part is, is that in the book, in the mm -hmm. Chinese book, yeah. this is heavily represented, yeah. right? This scene is, is, is important, yeah. right? The Cultural Revolution, it was not included in the Chinese it's, version of the It's show. a very big part of the story. Yeah. It, it establishes the yeah. character and why mm. they, you know, contacted the aliens yeah. in the first place, their, their yeah. reason behind it. So it's an important part of the story. Sure. And the depiction, as we all, we spoke about it before, but the depiction um, of the Netflix um, series of the Cultural Revolution is very factual. Yes. You know, yes. based on what we've seen in archival footage and testimonies from people that were there yeah. and the photographs and everything, it is incredibly accurate, if if not even toned down. Yeah. Um, and that's the part that the Chinese government can't show China. No. Because it's the same government that did this. This horrible stuff is still in power. Yeah. So it's a massive embarrassment for them, and it's not something they want people to remember. No. So it's kind of hushed up and silenced. Yes. And excused. So, so what I want you to understand while we go into this is that it wasn't massively hated. Like from no. the general public in they China that pirated, they did like it. And this yes. whole thing was hyped. I think it was hyped up by both sides mm. about people like, oh, everyone's so mad about this. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not. And if you look at the Chinese version, which is supposed to be like the more accurate version or whatever, and I'll be not, honest with you, it wasn't very good to no. me. To me. Uh, like a three second clip or something. So I can't show you much, but this is from the Chinese version in the intro, okay? And I just wanted to show you the accuracy of it. She's now getting um, punch cards from a computer, walking uh, to her desk, okay, past a colleague there. This is in the opening scene. Opens up the book. Okay, so it's set in the year 1979, okay? She pulls out the codes that are for 1979 because that's when this, um, this scene is set. Which is weird because it's supposed to be in the Cultural Revolution, which Yeah, but it's, uh, this is after the Cultural yeah. Revolution. They obviously had to change it so that yeah. they could not include the yeah, Cultural so that's Revolution. that's obviously what happened here. But immediately there's a problem because I had one of those IBM XTs. Yeah. And, um, well, let's take a look. First of all, Hmm. What has he even got on his screen there? Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> List. Run. He's, it's like syntax error in zero. <laughs> they couldn't even get a basic, basic it program running. It would have taken 30 seconds. It says locate, locate, run, syntax error. Anyone who knows how to program in basic can see this is a just a rubbish. It's yeah. rubbish. They couldn't even get this right. Yes. All you needed to do is like print, go to, you know, and then run and it would do it properly. But they screwed that up even. Yeah. Anyway, IBM Basic over there. Um, and that is an IBM XT, 4.7 megahertz, uh, my first computer, launched in 1983. My, my grandpa had one of those. I remember that. That's great. That's got the CGA monitor. Yeah. I actually really like that computer. I think it's epic. Um, but 1983, but that's supposed to be set in 1979 and all that <clears> stuff. <throat> so, you know, like you're not getting off to a good start as far as accuracy is concerned. <laughs> right here. in the opening scene. Yes, I know. Seriously, I know it's science fiction, but they didn't go like to the future to get an <laughs> IBM XT and bring it back to the past for that scene. Apparently. Mm. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. Then you get like amazing CG, I got to say, though, um, in, in the Chinese version. Uh, that's just... <laughs> Wonderful CG of like turkeys and stuff. 
Um, looks amazing. Fantastic. Anyway, okay, just, so here's... just wanted to say, yeah. having watched it, I can give you my my biased opinion. And my yeah. biased, and I have a biased opinion. Sure. My biased opinion is that the next Netflix version is actually very watchable. And the Chinese version for me is a snore fest. And it was so hard for me to watch. That's just in my biased opinion. Sure. Give it a shot. Check it out for yourself. You can, you know, search for it. You'll probably find it. Anyway. Um, so there's this article that came out. It says is, this, the Chinese, is this the one that yeah, you this were is talking the one. about? The okay. Chinese backlash over a Netflix three-body plot problem explained. And there, again, there's some points in here that I agree with. But I also think this is, there's, some, there's a, a bit of nonsense in here. Sure. And I'll tell you what it is. Okay. So uh, this is by uh, Aja or Aya Romano, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, this person goes into talking about how, uh, in general... Mm. how the the hubbub the whole pushback the nationalist pushback that was hyped up by new york times and stuff yeah was based on the idea that chinese people don't they're unaware of like what happened during the cultural revolution and so this is going to have like a knee-jerk response that kind of yeah. kind of feeling right it says yet this performed patriotism is no way in no way means that chinese citizens are unaware of the darker parts of their history Witness one, and he talks about a. Uh, they talk about a, a Weibo user that was stunned and impressed by the opening of the Netflix series, which is historically accurate, unflinching, unflinching depiction of the Cultural Revolution. Such reactions undercut U.S.-centric media's tendency to pigeonhole Chinese citizens as brainwasher, unquestioning of CCP dogma. And I agree with them on the idea that, of course, everyone in China is not unquestioning of CCP dogma. However. There is a gross misunderstanding of what happened in China's recent oh, yes. history. Oh, yes. And I think that's absolutely crazy to, to, to assume or to tell a reader that maybe, or imply, I should say imply, that Chinese people do have a firm grasp about what happened under I'm, Mao's I'm, rule. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Uh, people of our generation that I spoke to, and I... I don't ever bring stuff like this up, political no. stuff. I never no. want to make people feel uncomfortable. But when this stuff inevitably comes up in conversation, the majority of people our age don't even care about it because to them it's a nothing burger. Mm. Okay, because first of all, it's always downplayed. It's always like, oh, that was just a you know a little p painful part of history, but it was necessary. You know, you get that vibe for from people, and yes. it's like, oh, but it doesn't affect you. It's whatever. It's it's just something. Majority of people, they either don't know it in great detail because yes. it's glossed over, or they don't care about it because it doesn't affect them. It's I, a weird situation. I just think that, and, and again, I agree with this whole idea that you can't pigeonhole all the citizens, and I, yeah. we don't, right? No. But I, listen, my wife, highly educated, very yeah. high. She's a higher education level than me, yeah. right? Yeah. She is super smart, super switched on, speaks English. Yeah. She had not a clue. And she went through the the best schooling system that mainland China had to offer. Yeah. My age, right? Not an absolute clue about what happened. In fact, when she moved abroad to study and yeah. her professor started talking about some of the things that happened, and mm -hmm. she learned all this stuff from a foreign professor. Yeah. And she was first combative, didn't want to believe it, and then cried her eyes out mm. because of what really the atrocities that happened in, yeah. you know, even during her lifetime, sure. right, in mainland China. And this example is just one of so many people that you'll meet when they finally go abroad or they finally figure out how to, how to read stuff online. Yeah. The vast majority of Chinese people do not have an accurate picture of that. They Why do, do you, not yeah. have it. Why do you think the Netflix adaptation is banned in China? Why do you think? Yeah. Isn't that kind, doesn't that kind of tell it's you what's going on? It's because the Chinese government doesn't want people to know what actually happened. Correct. They don't want a real picture of it. They want it to be this obscure thing that, right. oh, you know, something bad maybe happened in the past, but it's not important. Sure. Forget about it. And they don't show it in media. They don't allow you to read about it in school books. It's just sure. not there. Sure. They don't teach it in school. So I I just thought that was a little yeah. ridiculous but at the same time i mean if if that's the point you're trying to get across okay but here's the deal mm -hmm. listen to this okay while the more violent aspects of the regime are often erased depictions of bleakness and misguided aims of the cultural revolution have become acceptable in chinese pop culture i hi ne i no. absolutely disagree with that yeah for example last year's widely acclaimed drama the youth memories dealt with the aftermath of the cultural revolution on china's lost generation who were deprived of the access to education after the communist takeover the show takes a lightly but overly critical stance, overtly critical stance towards the revolution's ban on higher education and treats the lifting of the ban as a major social leap forward. I, so I went through the show. You're right. Right, this drama. I didn't watch it to the end, mm -hmm. but I watched enough to understand what the themes are. The, 
there is a very mild, very mild criticism of mm -hmm. this policy under Mao, yeah. who ban basically banned higher education in a sure. way, right? That plunged China into the depths of what you know Pol Pot's Cambodia went through. Yeah. It, it was horrific. Yeah, right? I mean, honestly, long story short. You don't get this in Chinese media. They don't show you true depictions of what the cultural. That's what I'm trying to say. This about. show didn't. Yeah. This yeah. show, the Youth Memories, does not criticize mm. Mao's policy. It doesn't criticize Mao, and it's very light in this in this respect. I don't think that's a an example of something that actually stood up and and, and tried to criticize. You history. cannot criticize Mao in China. Right. You and can't. So, so the last piece of this article <laughs> says the problems of ne Netflix three body problem have more to do with the Netflix's Nextflixian Netflixian. Okay. A uh, tendency to make every production feel colorless, flat, and forgettable than than uh, with Chinese viewers. Uh, uh, look at Tencent's version or shows like the youth memories can give much more nuanced idea of how Chinese audiences understand their past. The Chinese <laughs> version of this show was was incredibly bland, sterile, and bland. Mm. Yeah, in comparison. Yeah. So I don't. Chinese I, people I disagree agree. with that. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, so that that nonsense article aside, um, it's really. All you need to take away from this is the fact that the Netflix adaptation of the three body problem is banned in China and you cannot watch it because the government does not want people to yes. see this particular scene. And we think Chinese people do like it. Yes. And we think it's overhyped that they got all up in arms about it. We actually it. have the, a, a, a Chinese dude yeah. um, had something nice to mm. say about it. What's this? It's a great Cambridge study, by the way. Okay. About how China uses like political, uh, sorry. They use celebrities to do political signaling to like mm -hmm. put those signals out there. Sure. And it's actually really emblematic of what happened with this. Yeah. Anyway. You've got links in the description as I always. Do, yeah. We like to cite our sources. Three body yep. problem. Okay. So this is Dr. Huey Lewis Lee. in the news. <laughs> Dr. Huey Lee. Yeah. At Dr. Huey Lee on Twitter. Okay. Let's see what he has to say. It's China's most successful science fiction like ever. It's like a national pride. But it kind of backfired. It turns out China has to ban the Netflix adaption because it showed the cultural revolution graphically. Some of you may not believe those stories. Netflix must be doing the CIA propaganda. That stuff can't be real. No, it's not. The reality was way worse. I would have definitely invited the aliens. It was no brainer. I would have even invited the Americans. The aliens can't be worse, right? The cultural revolution was so bad that in China, you're just supposed to forget about it. The official number says that there were about 130,000 formal executions, plus another uh, 1.5 million extrajudicial killings. But those are just official numbers. You can safely add another zero without exaggeration. I actually wrote a book-length description about that period when I was a dumb kid in college, and I showed it to a publisher, and he was like, are you stupid or what? You know the Communist Party is still the boss, right? It was pretty badly written. Uh, but if you speak Chinese, I'm happy to send you a copy because unlike the Communist Party, I can handle my embarrassing history. So what did they have against the scientists back in the 60s? Well, it was not just science. They also did the same to religions. Basically, anything that implies a higher authority than Chairman Mao's Little Red Book was not okay. Mao had to be the top expert in everything. From agriculture, to philosophy, to military, to poetry, you fucking name it. Have you noticed that when King Jong-un talked to those officials in North Korea, they always whip out a little notebook or something and start taking notes. It's not just for the personal vanity of the boss. It was a necessary TV marketing strategy for any cult. Like, can you imagine a cult leader saying something like, I'm not familiar with this area. Let's defer to the expert, doctor, something, something, something. No, they can't say that. The survival of a cult requires complete omniscience of their idol. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. It's actually a very good point. I like that. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you no need to come to company again. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I think you don't need to come to company again. Two plus two equals five. <laughs> the way he says that. Yeah. You're in love with another woman. <laughs> I'm watching video. What's up? Could you make me a cheese pizza, please? Yeah. I will make you the best one ever. <laughs> Just open your eyes. <laughs>
I love that. I'm just a homeless man hanging around this neighborhood. <laughs> That's my favorite quote. Yes. Yeah, Take a breath, you fill up my lungs